So you think you're ready now? How do you get that interview though? Today I invited Victor to do this video with me. He's, uh, he's going to be interning at Google and Snapchat, so he's pretty good. Um, today we're going to go over how to get the interview. You can do it in two ways, online and in real life. But both ways, you need to have a resume. So we're first going to, be, we're first going to talk about how to build the resume. Um, after you have your resume, then you apply online and then what about real life? In real life, you also need to uh, prepare a pitch. So we're going to go over preparing a pitch, then go to job fairs, go to tech talks, and my personal tricks on how to stand out at job fairs and tech talks. So yeah, let's get started. So we're first going to go over um, how to build your resume. Now, the first step is to document your work, right? And it's on a resume. It sounds like a no-brainer, but the resume is the quickest way for a recruiter to get a quick idea of uh, who you are and what you're capable of doing. I recommend learning LaTeX and um, just finding a LaTeX resume template online. It is your choice whether or not you want to build your own resume from scratch and make it super pretty, or just use a template and focus more on the content. Uh, personally, I'd rather just Focus on the content and use, use a template so it still looks nice and presentable. Although it might look a bit generic. So what's the content of your resume? What do you have on it? Um, it's important to have contact information, uh, your projects, your work experience, your school, uh, maybe other interests you have. That's like a very small part of it though. Um, Victor, what do you what do you put on your resume, and do you have any tips for a good resume? Um, I agree with the same idea. Uh, work experiences, uh, your your education, so where you're going is pretty important, as well as the projects you've done, your skills, and your contact info. So first of all, your contact info should be at the very top and should be easy to spot and read because that's the point of contact that res uh, recruiters want to contact you from and if it's going to be hard to find, it's just going to be more work for them. The average recruiter spends about 10-15 seconds per resume, so your info has to be very spot on and very concise so that they can process the info as quickly as possible. And so that means having bullet points and not paragraphs when describing what you've done or what your projects entail or your experiences. And usually I recommend putting work experience first or whatever you want to highlight first and then your school next your education, your GPA, uh, any notable courses, and then also then your projects, you want to list what languages you've used, um, impact if possible, like how many users are using it, what like optimization does it solve, or even just like a description of what it does, how, where you made it, and how. Remember to keep the material on your resume updated so that you're not containing stuff of like five years ago. And you shouldn't use long sentence descriptions, but rather instead use bullet points because they help keep it concise and readable for from the recruiter's point of view. What about starting each bullet point with like an action, like implemented, yeah. blah blah blah. And then yeah, so for your descriptions, you want to be talk about more of what you did towards your app and how you contributed rather than just what the app does. It's cool to talk about what the app or project does in like one bullet point, but you shouldn't be dedicating any more than that. It's more about what was the impact you had on this app? Did you build it from scratch? What APIs did you use? What languages did you use? And stuff like that will give more the recruiter or engineer reading the resume more insights into what exactly did you do and what exactly can you do. Also, um, you can definitely make your resume colorful if you want. And although it can look tacky to some, it also is nice to be flashy and stand out from the crowd in some other ways. Don't have your like a photo of you on it. This isn't Tinder. This is you're trying to get a job, not just hand out your photos. And even though that does help for being more memorable, try to be more memorable just through your resume and what you've done, than rather just having a photo on your resume. Yeah, uh, I'd like to add that um, some people go 
to the next step and actually customize each resume for the company that they're, they're applying to. If you have a dream company like Snapchat and they they're like a camera app, right? So maybe you'd want to highlight that, oh, uh, I work at Android or iOS and my app has this camera feature. Um, and for me, I when I was applying to companies at the job fair, um, it was really easy for me to just simply put their company logo onto the top left corner of my resume. And that kind of, that was my way, my way of showing them that, hey, uh, I specifically took the time to make this resume extra special for you. I can't add much more than that. That's like a very in-depth explanation of what to put on your resume. Um, there's, that's a lot of information and Victor wrote an article about how to get the interview and um, in it is a lot of like bullet point tips and stuff you should definitely remember. And we'll put that in the descri uh, description below. All right, so that was uh, part 4.1, how to build your resume. Um, when I was editing this interview, I realized that there was a lot of information and um, if everything was just put in one video, uh, it would have easily been 20, 30, or even 40 minutes. And I felt that maybe releasing it in chunks rather than blobs would make it more easy to digest. So hopefully you like the style. I think that's a general consensus from the feedback I've been getting from my friends that uh, the past video was too long. So hopefully you'll like this style of organization better and I'll see you in part 4.2, um, Applying Online.